following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Good morning, everyone. This is Thursday, March the 3rd, and this is the early edition. I'm uh, recording it to be replayed at my usual time at 10. I have to be out. So we're looking at uh, the Dow yesterday made this cluster formation. You see these four bars off to the low of the 24th of uh, Feb. It matches the 24th of January where there were four candles. You remember everything was going on. There was suddenly this aberration. I don't remember what it was exactly. And the market pulled back instead of spiking up. And we had four sessions of sideways action. So the big question is, do we get this fifth candle that matches? And that was the, the move of the 31st of January, a nice breakout to the upside today. Or do we continue in this holding pattern? Uh, the bias right now is for some kind of a rally. We'll see what happens if after, I would say that if after 1.30 this afternoon, the Dow is holding a plus 100 or more, that'll be really good action, especially after yesterday. But if it's just kind of minus 40, stuck in the range of not going anywhere, then it's in a holding pattern. So we're we'll looking at the futures, the Dow futures, we're down about 70, 80 points earlier on. Now they're up 20. And you can see this 14 period, this black 14 period in the daily chart, period moving average is really strong resistance. And if there is a move into the in the futures above the high that was made on the first, which was 34065, and it can hold in the 34100 or higher area. I think that'll be good short-term action because it's saying, for the moment, we're looking at U.S. markets. We're not looking overseas. We're looking at, wow, I mean, I'll get there in a moment. Crude oil just is relentless to the upside. So here we go. We're looking at um, we're looking at the Dow futures up now 43. S&P futures are up. I'll go to the continuous contract, are up five. If you look at the S&P, it had the same kind of cluster formation. Look, here we are. Uh, there it was four four candles, and again the fifth candle that was a candle of the 31st of January broke out, and we'll see if we're going to have the same pattern today. There's a lot of evidence to say that after the move yesterday, a kind of a relief rally with the, the, the beginning of the month fund buying, there should be a bias to the upside, and then we'll see whether or not anything happens to kind of counteract that with bad news from overseas. We'll continue. We're looking at the QQQ index 100 trading at 347.11, down 0.8 cents. It wasn't as uh, it didn't act as well yesterday, but it's still a cluster formation. And any move, it doesn't have to actually hold, but any move to the 352 level uh, in the next two days would be a positive to say, hey. At least there's a counter trade rally to this big move down. Looking at the IWM, the Russell 2000, the IWM is trading at 204.38, up 14 cents. Now, that had a much nicer move yesterday. It actually started uh, 190.60 was the low of the 24th of uh, January, and 24th of Feb was 187.92. So it broke that, and this is brand new leg A right here goes to peak A, because the other one was a peak B minus, because it failed. And this is a new leg B. So I, I'm thinking here that IWM has a little bit more strength than the others. Just on the left side daily chart, the weekly chart is still quite poor, as is the monthly. So we'll see if there's a nice bounce. Now we're going to get to the real story, gold. Gold is up 13 at 19.35. I normally would grab the outside bars of a big spike that comes back down. I grab them and I draw in a rectangle. And I say, OK, make it as simple as possible. Within that, we've got very clear outside uh, resistance and support levels. And that's 1976 on the upside. And the downside is 18, is it 1883 or something? 1878. 1878. But I like to do this. I say, where's the most prominent near-term rectangle formation? What are we trading with it? And that's what, that's what it shows. It says that today, if gold spikes, oh, I just lost that, spikes above 
uh, 19, let's call it 1953, and it's in 1935, that would be a big move to the upside. That would be a big positive, say we work our way towards the high of uh, 1976.5 and the continuous contract from the 24th of Feb. And if it starts to trade, not just pop, slide down, but if it starts to trade below 1916 for more than an hour and a half, it says, on a very short-term basis, gold is taking a bit of a breather. Looking at um, silver, silver at this point, this is 8, 11 in the morning. Silver's near that left side high, and it's holding, it's 25.57, up 38 cents right now. It looks to me like it wants to go to a leg D, about 25.70. Remember, silver kind of catches up to gold, and then when they're all looking together as if, oh, wow, this is great. Suddenly you get this big pullback, and let's hope it happens here yeah, just for geopolitical reasons more than anything else. And we're looking at the dollar. Now, this is so strange. In history, you can go back and you'll see that gold and the dollar usually trade inversely, not percentage-wise, but just generally in the direction. One goes up, other goes down. For a while now, they're going in, in the same. They don't move in counterpoint. They're moving together in unison. And gold, uh, the dollar is at 97.57, up 22 cents. Made a recovery high yesterday of 97.89. And this is all going towards what we had for a long time. We, we, subscribers to my opening call, we've been long for ages. We've been looking at this level of 80, 97.80 as one of the levels of a target on the left side that will then have to break out to start moving into the 100 area. Can it do that? Well, let's just see how it handles this week going into uh, Wednesday of next week, middle of next week. We'll see if the dollar is holding here. Because at some point, I'm not sure if gold and dollar will go up in unison. Gold is going up as a fear factor, a geopolitical fear factor. Dollar is going up as a currency favorite. Uh, it might be right, it might be wrong, but that's just what happens. Money internationally flows into the dollar. Let's go to high-grade copper. High-grade copper is up sharply. It's up 0.097 at 4.76. This is a this is a either it's a leg E, or we're looking at um, th this is a tough one because it is going towards the 4.82 highs of last year where it suddenly pulled back very sharply to the 4.13 area, I think it was. But that, and the weekly chart is making another beautiful cup formation. These double cup formations to the upside can be quite strong going towards the, the previous major resistance. And if you're looking at the monthly chart, the first resistance is in October of 2021 at 4.839. This is the continuous contract. And back in May of 2021, at 4.913. And you see the lovely synchronicity of one, two, three, four, five bars going back to the high. And now we've got one, two, three, four. This is the fifth bar. And it's big green. And it's just the beginning of the month. So we've got the whole month to see whether or not it's going to break out. Because if it does, you've got this left side, right side price time match that I drew in a long time ago that was at the high of. 2011, February, February of 2011, at 5.1255, goes up almost two. Now it's coming back and it looks to me like that's the height of the something. I'll be back in a moment. Guys, we have an early edition of the, of the Tiger King's Hour, and this is 8.15 in the morning. What's separating you from the most successful men and women on Wall Street? That's right information. Having all the information gives us the perspective we need to place the right trades at the right time. The TAS Profile Scanner is the premier market profile based scanner. Powered by its acclaimed TAS proprietary algorithms, this feature rich scanner instantly filters over 2500 plus global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodities, futures and Forex. This powerful suite of tools leverages instant trade filtering and strategy formulation to show you emerging trades before they happen. For a limited time, you can save $100 off your first month by using the promo code UPGRADE and you still get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Level the playing field with the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find under the Services tab at TFNN.com. Sign up today. 
Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay Area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Hi everyone, doing an early edition as 8 18 a.m. in the morning, and we're looking at the Dow futures up 69, SP futures are up 8. Uh, did, just see, yeah, I haven't done this for a while. Here's the uh, one minute chart, just a really a nice kind of up and down uh, trading pattern that was uh, it'd be completely different, of course, when we get to uh, when we get to this afternoon. But in the meantime, back at the ranch is what we're looking at. Look, just up and down, up and down, then a very long up from 520 this morning, goes up to the 6.30 a.m., goes around about uh, 43.80 in the e mini futures, drops sharply down at 6.50, goes to the 4.67 or 66 area, and rallies sharply, and then pulls back to the 200 period. Look at this 200 period moving average has just been a, a whipsaw, like a, zig, a, a, a sine wave pattern. And then it held it, and now it's starting to move very nicely. So this is going to be very important. I see a bias to the upside today, unless it's just some ex exogenous event that really knocks the market down. But uh, the beginning of the month buying should hold the market up quite well today. So look at crude oil, up 358 makes a record. Uh, at least in the short term period, it goes right to the 116.57 high. Well, this is just unbelievable. Uh, going from 85 in about eight or nine sessions to 116.57, that's gone. Let me just take that away. Um, yeah, this is very, I mean, this is significant. And what, what kind of effect is it going to have on the world in terms of the economies? Uh, all these bills. I mean, I remember getting my, what was it, uh, a bill in February, and I couldn't believe it how, um, how electricity had gone up so sharply. I thought, was that a mistake? Well, it wasn't a mistake. So we're looking at crude oil up very sharply here. I believe coal's going to be the next thing that moves up. Uh, we're looking, as I said, high grade copper seems to have rallied quite nicely. Um, hasn't broken out, uh, it's broken out short term. But in the weekly chart, we're looking at that 482 level as, as a potential. Now, this is going to be very interesting. Look at the TLT. The TLT dropped sharply yesterday from the 142.33 area down to 136.40s. Today, it's up $1.47 and 137.94. So it's telling me that the yields are in a higher range, haven't started to pull back significantly. 
and they won't pull back until the TLT starts to trade towards the 200 period moving average of 145.15. But more importantly, what we're looking at is look at this monthly chart. That monthly chart says 133.19 was the low in March of 2021. It rallies all the way to 155.12. And then this is the iShares 20 year Treasury bond fund goes to 134.51. Well, 60, less than 60 cents away from the low, and it's still an ugly candle. And look at this, the candle of um, last month, almost like a Chapman Wave Roman candle, and we've already been halfway into it. So I'm watching this really closely because it looks to me, no matter what the Fed wants to do, the rates are going to try to move higher. Uh, so we'll see what they do, what the Fed does to be able to keep maintain it at a, a lower level. We'll see if that's even possible. Uh, now let's go to the um, Bitcoin uh, or the GBTs, BTC. This is the Bitcoin futures. They were down about 360. Now they're down 160. They're holding quite nicely here. And the 45,745 45, level is a 200 period exponential moving average. The resistance in the daily, the weekly has, well, it's, it's right on it as we speak at 40,000, 4760s. And if we can push into the, if anything else is moved, I wonder when uh, Bitcoin will move. If we can get to the 46,800 area, it doesn't have to close there, it just has to get there to start a leg, actually a leg B in the weekly chart starts at 45,905, somewhere around there. Uh, okay, next thing we're looking at is, uh, I'm not sure what's happening over there. It says on, 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 off. Doesn't matter. Okay. Now, a bunch of things we want to look at. Within the context of patterns, let's just go back to this one right here. Let me show you. This is I show my subscribers to my opening call every day. Uh, the pattern that we're looking at is the match from the 24th of January, 33,150 low. Up goes, makes a peak A, and then it stalls for a couple of days. But all of this was really a containment from the low of four bars at the nine at the pink nine period exponential moving average. Then what happens is it spirals up, pulls back, and it only goes to a peak C, C minus, makes the dreaded H pattern and fails. So today is the fourth day of this from the low of the 24th of February at 32,272 in the Dow. We're going to be watching to see, does it break above 34,095 to start a strong leg B? what happens. My suspicion is it's probably going to do that. Yesterday, I had a choice of adding to a particular position, or I, I made the choice, could not be in a choice, or starting a position at the open, gap up opening in the Dow, thinking, wow, so close to the low of 32,272, opening up at uh, maybe uh, 32,280 or something like that, gives me a chance to have at least for subscribers have a decent counter trend relief rally. I didn't make the right choice. I chose instead the one that didn't work. And this one should have been the one I chose. And now I didn't, I could have got back in today. But the risk reward, just because of what's going on internationally, said to me, you've missed your best entry. Rather choose something else that has the potential to move the same percentage, but maybe lower priced. And that's what we've done. So and if you're looking at this chart right here, this is a chart with the nine period exponential moving average. Uh, green is positive, pink is negative, and you can see it is still pink. It hasn't turned green. I don't know when it will turn green. It could be soon. We're getting very oversold in the unbalanced volume. So we'll be, be watching that closely. There's a lot going on. And in the meantime, let me just do a couple of things. I some questions, and now I'm going to get to them. Uh, yep, hi all. <laughs> and uh, what I wanted to look at was, yes, yeah, so uh, Gigi sent me a note that we saw that. Powell backs quarter point rate rise in March despite Ukraine war effects, correct? And that should be a bit of a relief to the market just at the moment. We'll see what happens. Now let's go through these things. Look, the RTH, this is the S&P, no, sorry, this is the Van Eck retail ETF, 20% is Amazon. It's had a very nice leg A, and now it's in then a peak A, and now it's in a leg B. I, I'm not able yet to give it a sign that says it's in a buy mode, but this is very nice action from the bottom. But when you're looking at it in the weekly chart, 
wow, that's quite a spill from 200 down to 100 and uh, uh, was it 64? So it says that within retail, there's been an effect and that effect has really pulled it back very sharply. But if you look at the monthly, this is just a three month correction so far. Uh, this is the fourth month we're going into. And that just says now we can go to the XRT. The XRT is the S&P retail. This is equal weighted, so Amazon doesn't distort. That one made a peak C. That's the only way I can count it, unless I count this as a phantom peak. It's a little bit too big to call it a phantom peak. It looks like a peak D. And that pullback is much more serious. So Amazon doesn't distort it. And yet you've got, uh, what, JWN? You've got these uh, retail stocks that had spectacular moves yesterday. So we've got to put this whole thing together. I'll be back in a moment. Dow futures up 106. That's a very good sign. S&P futures are up 30. We'll be right back. Basil Chapman, early edition. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. You could be making money off the stock market. And if you're already making money off the stock market, you could be making a lot more. Check out TFNN and Tiger TV and get expert investing advice to give you the power to control your financial future. Go to TFNN.com and find the newsletter for you. Whether you're into trading gold, metals, futures, currencies, or options, you'll get advice and analysis to help you seriously get ahead. TFNN also features trading services with a 30-day money-back guarantee for new subscribers, as well as TFNN's Tiger Den Trading Room, trading software, and educational webinars for all trading levels and make sure you check out tiger tv for free on tfnn.com or tfnn's youtube channel for live financial content from 8 30 a.m to 4 p.m eastern on market days stop watching on the sidelines while other people get rich and become the investor you were born to be tfnn educating investors tfnn is excited about our new software charting program the art of timing the trade charts in collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. Hi folks, we're back. Basil Chapman here, early edition, 8.30 in the morning, and we're looking at the E-mini futures, which ran up to 4, 4, 3, 9, 6, 50. Just a moment to go at a peak D in the Chapman wave, starting to pull back just a tad, but that week, that 10 minute chart is only in leg B, and that could be a good sign. All right, so what we're looking at here is, I was going through different things. I was talking about uh, how uh, JWN, which is Nordstrom, had a spectacular move. One moment it's trading in the 20s yesterday, and the next minute after hours, it's, or at least early in the morning, it pops up into the 20, hits 27s. So that, that kind of action is really important to monitor. And what we're really looking at in terms of the XRT is to say that the 
the U.S. economy, as it stands right at this particular moment, if measured by chart patterns, is saying if this is just the start of a move to the downside because of the concerted effort, if there's an international incident, this is more than an incident, this is war, an international incident, and you get the S&P, look at this, we were talking about how the monthly candles are telling us so much. Look, if we go to the S&P monthly chart, look at that. This is just a red candle. It's called the Chapman Wave uh, Roman candle right there, the first candle because it opens. Uh, Roman candle because it's a, a firework, right? You light it, it goes up. And what happens is at tops over the, all the years, for instance, 2007, we saw a doji candle. I think it was after the top was made, the next candle. And then what happens if it gets filled and it creates another doji candle? You've got to be careful because if on any weekly basis, if there is a close below a key metric, and that would be the wick of this last candle, the February candle, a weekly close below 42.80, let's call it, that's just suggesting there's a good chance that you're going to retest the most recent low. That was at the 41 or 14 level ish. So we've got to watch this. But if, in fact, we start to consolidate, and for whatever reason, by the end of the month, not intra month, but by the end of the month, there's a move towards the open of the Roman candle, in this case, the second candle. This is the candle of February, and it opens at 45.19. If we get even close to that, that says you've used up time. But the other thing that I'm looking at is that the nine period moving average over the 14 period moving average says to get that green now, to get it pink by closing underneath the 14 period moving average, there would have to be a move that takes you down to 4,000 or probably below 4,000. So those are metrics that I'm looking at in the monthly chart. And I don't want to get too carried away by saying you've got all the commodities uh, around the, the key commodities that are really important, moving up, not not just sharply, not just exponentially, but these are almost vertical moves. Look at the crude oil. That in the last, look at this monthly chart. Now, people say, oh, oh, you know, uh, the crude oil and all that, it's just been going up because of uh, your Ukraine situation. What are you talking about? The low that was made in crude oil and the continuous contract most recent though was December of 2021 on the weekly chart. That's the week of the third. It's been going up ever since. And that was kind of a warning to say something's happening. You've got to be careful. Yes, the exponential move right here, that vertical move after the doji candle of last week, just moving, uh, th this candle moving so sharply in green. We've got all the way to go to Friday. Can it pull back? Well, on a short term basis, by any metric, I'm sure. But if you're looking put call ratios and everything in the crude oil contract, I haven't done that. But my guess is that the, the outweighing of the calls to the puts must be enormous. And if you're looking at the SCO, the SCO is the inverse. It is the reverse. When crude oil goes up, the SCA, which is the uh, pro shares, uh, ultra short uh, Bloomberg, I think this is two times short. This is going the MACD has just crossed negative stochastic, still at 30%. It could even go down to the 15 or the 8%. That's just a big negative. But it doesn't mean to say that at some point there is mention of bringing oil in, uh, out, uh, our reserves, whatever it is. Now, on a very short-term basis, I can understand that. But you don't really want to be bringing your crude oil, your, your reserves out now when you aren't making it up anyway. It's just going to be expended and not not replaced. That to me is really a crux. It's a very important aspect. So that's crude oil. Now I wanted to do a couple of other things. The VIX index pulled back sharply yesterday intraday. Today's down 51 cents at 30.23. If there is going to be, let me do this for some of you who might be tuning in, tuning in late. And if you're listening to my show, which will be in uh, two hours' time, this right now it will be uh, 20 past. Uh, uh, what will it be? It'll be 10:35. Uh, 10, 10, yeah, 10:35 instead of 8:35 a.m. If you're looking at this, the pattern that I'm looking at here is that 
See the way um, on this last bounce to 35, the VIX index didn't go to the 37.79 level. And even though the news was way worse, it didn't break the COVID inflation, Russia hysteria of the 24th. Actually, that was that was a coincidence on the 24th, the low was the 24th in the market and the high was in the VIX. So, so far it's saying there are things being done that are ameliorating some of the um, some of the the damage. That's economically, that's morally, just it goes through everything. And the VIX is telling us I'm still really high, 30.25, but if I do pull back to maybe the 28 to 87 uh, 14 period exponential moving average, there should be a 130 point move at least in the Dow. Uh, S&P should, uh, S&P futures up 10, they should be up 22 or something like that. So that's what we're looking at. And the reason why I mentioned that is because this is the fifth session and I've made it a very critical session for me in terms of the match of this bar right here. The day of the 31st of January after the low that was made uh, on the 24th at 33,150 in the Dow, we went to a lower low, the dreaded H was a failure pattern, but within two sessions, actually it was within one session, we went back up above 33,150 and we've been there for a while. So that's important, today is the fifth session. If you're looking at the YM, you'll see there's just a break uh, of, the, of the nine, the pink nine period moving average, and we're resting up against the 14 period moving average. A very big move could even take us to on Friday maybe, 34,300, the 200 period moving average. Um, I would like to see that uh, just in terms of relief to see what's working. Now, what, a stock that I mentioned just a while back, if I can even think of the name Snap, I had said that this is a day late. It's not exactly my Chapman Wave volume price climax reversal on the fourth. The low was the third. It was a huge gap down with massive volume, major volume at 24.32 on the 3rd of February. And I said, I, this is, uh, I, it was the next day, a huge island reversal to the upside. And what I said is, I believe this is a Chapman Wave volume price climax reversal. And then on, in, in looking at it closer uh, that day, I mentioned the following day, no, it missed it by one day. It was the gap to the upside. I think that was earnings. I don't know what it was. And I said, the rule of thumb in the Chapman Wave methodology is that when you get the, the Chapman Wave volume price climax reversal, there's a really good chance that you're going to go see the price hold way above that low for a minimum of 28 days. If it lasts over 28 days, it can even double to 56 days. But here we are. This is day. Uh, was it? Are you having fun trading the markets but having trouble finding like-minded individuals to discuss your trading and investment ideas with? Become an apex predator in the trading markets and join the Tiger's Den Trading Room only at TFNN.com. The Tiger's Den is an exclusive trading room where successful traders from around the world come to exchange trades and ideas. Join the den and surround yourself with the sharpest minds in the trading world. Subscribers to the Tiger's Den are also the first to have their questions answered live on air and can privately chat with our TFNN hosts live during their shows. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day. Subscribe to the Tiger's Den risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee and become part of the TFNN trading community. TFNN, educating investors. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up and coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LA. 
LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. So we're looking at Snap Inc. It's up 9 cents at 37.46. And what I said was, it should hold, and it's 27 days. Tomorrow will be 28. Uh, uh, so we're, I think we'll leave. I haven't counted 100%, but that's what I think it is. And I also said that doesn't mean to say it goes from a buy signal to a buy mode. But in the meantime, it's just holding steady in a rectangle formation, stuck here. If we can ever get to the 4250 area, that'll be a nice breakout to the upside. In the meantime, it's just stuck, but it is holding way above the 2432 low in that particular technique in the Chapman wave. Now, a whole bunch of things. GDX, yes. Question is GDX, what, what about the GDX? GDX has the rectangle formation. It's trading at 3576. 3607 was the high that was made uh, five sessions ago. And let me just draw this in the rectangle formation. And of course, in this particular instance, it's now treating the 3460 uh, level as support. I, I don't, from the way there's a leg D in the weekly chart, not a particularly good looking pattern in the monthly until I have to wait for the close of the month of March. But I am going to say that the Chapman wave falling X formation has got a third line. And this line up here, is a second falling X formation. And it says that on any week that there's a close above 37.50 will really improve the monthly chart. And then we can look at the monthly chart and say, hey, now we can draw in the pattern. I'm going to do a little premature of the falling X Chapman wave formation turning into a cup formation. And that says that gold is in play. And one of the reasons why we have a gold stock, we're trying to have a mix of all these different areas is because as a as an icon of fear, geopolitical fear, gold has always been the go-to place. And that can help the, the stocks. In fact, some of the stocks have done really well. Some stocks actually have just been kind of, they've been okay, but not great. So I am saying that this is a, a very a particular, very special time for this particular chart. It's also a particular time, of course, in the conflagration that's going on. But I'm just talking about chart formations because the weekly chart says, to be able to make a confirmed cup formation there, so that it helps the weekly, it helps the monthly chart. You want to see this candle right here, the candle of 18th of June, 2021, with a high of 38.29. You want to see at least it opened at 37.57. 38.29 was the high. So 37.57 has to kind of be your target in the shorter term, meaning up to weekly, so shorter term could be two weeks or so. So that's what we're looking at. It also says the, from the from the daily chart, the stochastic went to 80%, but it's not holding over 80%. In fact, it is at 77%. It needs to hold in the 80% level to say, hey, I'm here for a longer period of time. This is a daily chart, of course, longer period of time is less than I'd be saying if it was a weekly chart. But that's what you need to see. And as soon as that happens, the nine is way above the 14 period moving average in the day. It says that for gold, the GDX, the gold miners ETF to break down 
you'd probably have to see a close under 32 to get that nine to close under the 14 period moving edge. Uh, right now, I just don't think I see that. So that's within the context of the other things that we're looking at. That was that. The next thing I was asked about was, oh, SCCO, can I look at that? That was um, 72.90. This is Southern Copper Corporation, almost got the same cup formation that we were looking at in gold. This is the weekly chart, weekly is in leg D, a close, a, a, a peak D underneath the previous high, in this case, the high of the 14th of May at 83.29, which is 72.90 right now. We would say, uh oh, it's going to take a little time to consolidate, but this leg D needs to get it needs to continue strong. The MACD is very good. The stochastics under 80%. It's rallying, and the on-balance volume is really good. In fact, it's just getting a tad overbought in the weekly, but the daily says, hey, there could be a lot to go. There's only leg C in the daily chart. So SSCO, tremendous support between 71 and 69. This is 72.91 right now. This is on a shorter-term basis. Uh, next question I had was, where did, it go? where did it go? Where did it go? Yeah, Ford. Ford had a big move yesterday, but that was just on talk talks about um, spinning off the electric vehicle side of it. 25, you remember going to the high of the 13th of January, 2587, you just, there wasn't a single news media that you didn't pick up and say, hey, uh, Ford is electric, wow, it's going to ch challenge Tesla, etc. And it goes from 25 down to 15, uh, 1590s. Uh, now it's 1810, leg B. It's up today, 30% pre-market at 1840. I have to tell you, I think there's a lot more work to be done for Ford to really break out. And that says, look at Tesla. You remember Tesla had that round number low. It was a fabulous um, notation there, 700.00 at the round number low of, I think that was also the, what was that, 20, 24th of Feb. It's trading now. Uh, pre-market at eight, eight, 879. It's on the 200 period moving average. Look at the 200 period orange on the left here. Was tremendous support, then it broke down, then it became resistance, and now it's like a magnet. For Tesla to really break away from this 200 period moving average, it has to hold above eight, I'd have to say 885. It has to touch it a couple of times and then hold above 880 for about three out of three out of four sessions, three times, it needs to be holding there. And then I say, hey, that is good action. You can't just have a pop and a failure because that's a big magnet. Next question I had was, would I look at the semiconductor index? Semis, this is pre-market, uh, unchanged, just about at 268. Uh, it, Look, 200 period moving average, we just saw it, right? I didn't even realize that we we're going to talk about apples to apples. Look, 200 period moving average became uh, a support, broke down, then became resistance ever since the late January break under the 318 all-time high goes down to 249, re rebounds all the way to the 2, 280 area, 290.35 on the, on the 10th of Feb, plunges down onto the 24th, down to the 246.76 uh, in the dreaded H pattern. It is a positive that it's above. So I'm thinking that many of the charts are going to make this lower. Now they're going to make the lowercase h to try for another h uh, here on the right side. So the semiconductors to break out would have to go to 290 on a closing basis in the weekly chart. I just don't see that. I think there's a lot of there's a, there are a lot of problems. If you look at the best of the best, look at Nvidia. Uh, you know, same thing. Looks the same as the SMHs. There are some like MU was doing very well. It's still doing very well. It's a much much. This is one of the best charts that I'm looking at here in the semis. Micron Tech uh, trading at 92.55. Uh, went from 98.45 in January, uh, January the 5th, plunges down to the 75.52 level, spirals up to the 96s, plunges down to the 84s, and now it's trading in 93. So this zigzag pattern just says very simply, treat it as a Chapman wave inside track, repellent zone, this whole area here, and if it needs to break above 96.80, to 97.50, it needs to close there to say, hey, I'm making a leg D, but I'm also breaking out, and that'll be a big sign. So that's the only one in the whole semiconductor index that I find really worth talking about, just chart that I look at. I mean, there are some others, I'm sure. Um, next question I had before we go to a break is, oh, what, do, what will you be looking for today? Um, let me just go to the futures because uh, the market hasn't opened yet. It's got 30, what, 30, uh, it's got, uh, 40 minutes to go. So I'm looking at this. 
there's a chance that we match that candle right there, January 31st, by having a nice pop to the upside. The 34,290s is extremely strong. 200 period expansion, moving average, resistance, but it's duration. I don't want to see it just a, a one of those days where you, you're up sharply and within a split second, you're 20 points down features in the S&P, then 20 points up. There has to be a sustained rally after 130 above plus 100, and that'll be a good close. The reality is that navigating financial markets can be risky. Markets can be chaotic and difficult to understand. Having the latest market advice can help you turn this chaos into a key for creating winning trades. At TFNN, we understand that it can be hard to find reliable market news. That's why each of our market experts offers their very own market newsletter, a must-have tool for every trader out there striving to find an edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets so you can analyze the market before you trade. Try any of our great newsletters risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee. Just visit the Newsletters tab on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Are you having fun trading the markets, but having trouble finding like-minded individuals to discuss your trading and investment ideas with? Become an apex predator in the trading markets and join the Tiger's Den Trading Room only at TFNN.com. The Tiger's Den is an exclusive trading room where successful traders from around the world come to exchange trades and ideas. Join the den and surround yourself with the sharpest minds in the trading world. Subscribers to the Tiger's Den are also the first to have their questions answered live on air and can privately chat with our TFNN hosts live during their shows. Interact with other tigers and tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day. Subscribe to the Tiger's Den risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee and become part of the TFNN trading community. TFNN, educating investors. Are you looking for a secured investment which pays you on a monthly basis? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be the program for you. The best rate on a five-year CD in the country right now, according to Bankrate.com, is paying 1% per year or $1,000 per $100,000 invested. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year, paid monthly, on secured, high-value, billable properties in St. Petersburg, Florida. The investment is for four years, paying 7% per year or $7,000 per $100,000 invested. Your investment is secured by high-value real estate in St. Petersburg, Florida. Your investment can be anywhere from $100,000 to $500,000. Do you want to make $1,000 per year on $100,000 invested or $7,000 per year on a secured Tiger First Mortgage? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be just the program for you. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year paid monthly. For more information, you can call 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Hi hey folks, just uh, uh, I, uh, I mentioned uh, uh, in, in the den that there's a chance that the Iranian deal uh, is going to be get, get done, and that means that they will release uh, oil reserves. That's the only thing that I can see that would actually bring down the price of oil. It could bring down the price of many things, and that's why the the, the market could be ready to have that that bounce today. We'll see what happens. So, and the question, Jay, the the answer is that I I too find that it's spurious to say uh, fund buying at the end of the month, uh, fund buying at the beginning of the month. It does happen, but I I haven't really seen proof that it actually impacts the market other than. The conditions that I'm looking at, so it does. That's the, that's the expression is that there's fund buying is in, and there is because money comes in every month. Money comes in, and they have to put it to use. So that's really the issue. I think what you and I are both implying is how does it affect the market? How do you know on the 24th they weren't buying, 25th they weren't buying? And all I can say is that we just have to look at the, the markets. I, I think uh, other people would have better information. I just treat it as it's an it's one of the factors. So. 
Look at wheat. Wheat has skyrocketed this up 67 at 111.26. Look at that spiral to the upside. Look at corn. Uh, well, let's go to soybeans. Also a nice move, but it's at the lows. But corn is not corn. Is look at this move in corn. At, at recovery high, it's got an alternate count, G slash B. This is really important. It's one of the reasons why we keep holding the DBA, the DB Agricultural Fund. And that's, um, look at it, 21.60. We're in the 30s, 13s, in the 13s. This is a big move up. And that's just saying prices are going to go higher all the way around. So as I wrap up, I'm going to hand you over to Tommy O'Brien, great show at 9 o'clock in the morning, 9.06, uh, market kickoff. And the only other thing I wanted to say before we wrap it up is, yes, if the chart pattern we're looking at, let me do this one more time, is that the fifth candle after the low that was made in the 24th was a big candle to the upside. We're going to be watching to see if there's a repeat pattern here in the Dow today by seeing the Dow start to move up and holding 120 or more. Oops, already up under the fourth feet. Have a wonderful day. I'll be back on regular time tomorrow. Check out my open call, my daily newsletter, and stay tuned for Tommy O'Brien. Thank you for joining me today. This is a beautiful day.